All right, the Las Vegas Raiders starters got their work in Wednesday and Thursday against the San Francisco 49ers starters. So really, we've already learned what the Raiders are about these days with their improved defense. It's ones against ones in situational football with both teams running their best plays because teams can't film those joint practices. But hey, that doesn't mean there isn't any more to learn from the preseason game. The Raiders did win the game 34-7, but of course that isn't the most important part. We saw the younger players, a look at the competition for positions and the depth of the team. The Raider backups whooped up on the 49er backups too, but still, there were a few more things to learn from this game. For starters, it's going to be hard to keep Aiden O'Connell off the field if starting quarterback Jim Garoppolo goes down. I think there's definitely going to be a competition for the backup spot now. I always thought O'Connell was the better candidate to back up Garoppolo, but I'll admit, I didn't think he was going to look as good as he did. I just didn't think much of Hoyer. Either way, O'Connell showed he's poised. He has command of the offense. He processes information very quickly. He's decisive. He's accurate, and he has a big arm. He was 15 of 18 for 141 yards and a touchdown, and two of his passes were dropped. If only third round speedster Trey Tucker would have held on to the deep ball O'Connell threw to him. O'Connell's preseason debut was impressive nonetheless, though. Especially when you look at how all the quarterbacks that got picked in the top five looked in their debuts. He didn't do it on the 49ers starting defense, but he didn't have Devontae Adams and Hunter Renfro on his offense either. I believe he made the best of what he had around him. Don't mistake this for an overreaction because it's really not. Garoppolo's still the guy to me. We also learned the right guard spot is wide open. Many of you had Alex Bars as the guy because he's listed number one on the unofficial depth chart, but it's unofficial for a reason. The new regime isn't going to give away every starter. If a position could be held back, they will hold it back. If Bars was the starter, he would have either not played at all or been in at the beginning of the game. He didn't get in until very late in the game, so at the very least, right guard is an open competition. It doesn't look or sound like there's a clear leader in the clubhouse either. I thought Natane Mutai looked pretty good, but he was on the left side. Were the Raiders moving to the right side? I thought McClendon Curtis looked pretty good too, but he was playing against guys that may or may not still be playing football when the regular season starts. He's an undrafted free agent, so I'm not sure the new regime would trust him with reps with the ones this soon. All I know is they got to do something about the right guard position. The new regime loves Dylan Parham on the left side, but a right guard is needed to keep Garoppolo upright and healthy. One thing that I have to say that's clearer than ever now is the fact that the Raiders need running back Josh Jacobs back. I heard all the stuff about Zamir White being decisive and the offensive line saying it's fun to block for him, but he can't do what Jacobs does. Many like to give the Raider offensive line too much credit for all the yardage Jacobs gained last year. I'm not saying they don't block for him, but he makes them look good too. There were plenty of times that the offensive line allowed penetration and the defensive player had him dead to right in the backfield last year, but Jacobs made the man miss and made a nice gain out of it. Jacobs also has great vision to not only see the holes that are already open, but also the holes that aren't open yet, but are developing and will be there. Samir White doesn't have that in his game. He's a power back with straight line speed. He doesn't get the yards that Jacobs gets when it appears the defense has him trapped with nowhere to go. If the Raiders are going to depend on the running game like they did last year, they need Jacobs. The good thing is he'll likely sign his franchise tag just before week one. On defense, the Raiders are deep in the secondary and they have guys that can make plays on the ball. Corners Marcus Peters, Jacorian Bennett, and Nate Hobbs were all over 49er receivers and got a bunch of interceptions on them in joint practices. In the game, the Raiders had one interception, but it should have been two. Duke Shelley, who had one Thursday, dropped one in the game that was caught for a touchdown. Those interceptions and opportunities for interceptions are coming because the defensive line is getting to the quarterback at a high rate. Interior defensive lineman Jerry Tillery has improved and put all kinds of pressure on the quarterback in joint practices along with Chandler Jones, Nessa J. Silvera, and Byron Young. From that end of the game, we can see the defensive line is deep now and can come in waves. The backups really performed in that game as they came up with four sacks and five quarterback hits on the day. As rushers Isaac Rochelle and Jordan Willis had a half a sack apiece. Fellow edge rusher Malcolm Coons didn't, but he got there a few times. Interior defense lineman Adam Butler and John Jenkins also had sacks, as did linebacker Amari Burney. Oh, more good news. Adam's injury really isn't that serious as he was working on the agility ladder right before the game. That's a no-no if you have something really wrong with you. We can tell the Raiders are well coached too. The starters got turnovers on the 49er starters in joint practices and the backups got turnovers on the 49er backups in the game. 
That tells you everyone from the Raider defensive starters to backups are being coached to look for and force those turnovers. They also played a clean game with only three penalties for 27 yards. Now that's improvement. All they have to do now is get better at protecting the passer and they just might be doing something at the end of the season. Thank you for watching. See you next time.